Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right, take your Bibles and turn with me back to the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, and we're going to look at chapter 2. Okay, now there's an interesting story about how this all happens. Because remember, Nehemiah had heard that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and what a terrible shame that was and he was burdened for it. And he, he prayed and he spent four months in prayer pouring out his heart to God. Now, I want you to see what happens in chapter 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was set before him. And I took up the wine and I gave it unto the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. Now, keep in mind, it's four months after he had heard. He'd been praying about this for four months. Have you ever prayed for something for, for four months? Have you ever been burdened by something so much that for four months it just was a constant matter of prayer. Now notice it says, now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Now, this is important to understand because the cupbearer, there was a law in a lot of these kingdoms that nobody could be sad or sick around the king. Okay? Um, you can't be sad. You can't be sick. If you're sad or you're sick, you change or you don't go in to be with the king. Okay, and Nehemiah, I'm sure, had been very disciplined, even though he was, was really broken uh, about what was happening in Jerusalem. He still determined that he was not going to be sad in front of the king, not only for safety, I'm sure, but also because that was his job. It was a matter of integrity. And so he hadn't been sad. But notice in verse 2, Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. Then I was sore afraid. Ooh, the king noticed, and, and now his life was in danger. But notice what happens. Verse 3, And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Now, this was something that they always just said, let the king live forever. Uh, it's like, uh, oh, majesty or whatever. <clears throat> but you'll see that in a lot of the different writings. They still do it in England. They still do it in England. Do they really? Yeah. Really? Uh, um, yeah uh, at the coronation, there was a whole thing about it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I guess they still do it. Uh, yeah, Queen Elizabeth almost lived forever. Yeah, but but uh, we're moving on. Um, <clears throat> he said, Verse 3, and he said, O king, uh, live forever. Uh, why should not my countenance be sad when the city of the place of my father's sepulchers lieth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Notice he, he just blurts this out. It was his soul just coming out in a gushing, okay? Uh, it, it was like almost like he lost control and just burst out with this. <sighs> Notice, at this point, the king could have just had him executed or at least thrown in prison. But notice what happens to me in verse 4. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? Okay? What do you want to do about it? See, apparently the king was a solution man. <laughs> okay? When you see a problem, you find out what the solution is. Okay? You know, it's, it's one thing to be all upset about something, but it is important to go and find the solution for it. So the king was saying, oh, what do you make your request? What is your solution, Nehemiah? Um, and notice what, how that verse ends. Uh, verse 4, uh, so I prayed to the God of heaven. <laughs> okay, now, was this a long and drawn out prayer? You know, oh, thou Jehovah, thou betwixt dwellest, Betwixt the cherubims, you know, it, you know, the thrice holy, and, and no, 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 no. I'm sure it was not long and flowery. I'm sure it was a silent prayer, and I am sure that it was much like Peter's prayer. Remember when Peter was sinking into the water and he cried out, "Lord, help me!" <laughs> it's probably something like that. So I prayed to the God of heaven. Verse 5, and then I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant hath found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. 
okay? He's, he's saying, you know, King, let me go so that I can build it. I want to solve this problem. Now, notice what it says, uh, verse 6. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him. Why would it mention the queen at that point? Hmm. Let me tell you why I think it's mentioned. I think that at that point, when the king heard the Nehemiah's request, he probably looked over at the queen, and the queen looked at him and smiled and maybe nodded her head. And so <clears throat> he knew that the queen had thought, yeah, this is a good idea. So he thought, okay. So notice what it says. He asks, for how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? So the king wanted him back. Now, if the king didn't really like Nehemiah, he would have said, hmm, okay, go, and you can just stay there. <laughs> but he didn't. He wanted him back. How long are you going to be gone? Um, and, and so then, you know, he, he, he said, moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to me to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come unto Judah. Uh, and, uh, and a letter to the Asaph, to the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, uh, which appertaineth to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Okay? Notice that Nehemiah doesn't give the king the credit. He gives God the credit because he knew that God had moved upon the king's heart. Now, how did he know that? Know that? Well, because that's what he had been asking God to do. You see, when you and I pray for something and God goes and answers our prayers, we need to give him the glory, not the people that God uses to make it happen, although we should be thankful to them. But we need to be very careful to give God the glory because when he answers the prayers, we need to be watching for it. We need to be continuing in prayer. And then when God answers it, we need to give him the glory because he is the one who makes it happen. The Bible tells us that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and like the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. And God did that with the heart of the king. See, the king had to go against custom. He had to go against what was best for his economy and his finances. He had to go against what was, well, would have been natural. And he had to obey God's urging in his heart and grant Nehemiah's request. <laughs> and so Nehemiah was careful to give God the glory because it was God that had done the moving. Hey, love you guys. See you later. Bye.